Here's a tutorial for my all-time favorite crochet flower. Hey everybody, it's me Margaret and I finally have permission to do my favorite flower as I have always called it. It's by Nikki and Stitches and I'll give you the link to the pattern down below so if you don't need this tutorial, fine, go straight to that. Um, also, on that same page is a crochet version of this headband. Now, I've done this headband, a tutorial on it. Um, this is basically done on the Addy machine, but I explain with measurements how you can crochet or knit or loom knit or whatever uh, your own a headband like this and then you pick a flower of your choice to put on it and everybody always says what is this flower I provide the link no I couldn't do a tutorial because it wasn't my flower but I got permission from sweet Nikki who allowed us so that's what we're going to do today and um, I would call this an intermediate project why because it's kind of awkward you are doing simple single crochets and double crochets, but sometimes the way in which you have to uh, position your hook is a little bit awkward. And if it's not second nature to you, uh, crochet is not second nature yet to you, you might find it frustrating, but it's certainly worth a try with a video tutorial, what do you have to lose? So I would say also that this tutorial assumes that you are familiar with a single crochet, a double crochet, and slip stitches. And other than that, that's that's really all the skills you need. And in case you're wondering, in this tutorial I'm using worsted weight yarn and a 5.5 millimeter hook. And it's important to note that this is a flower, so it doesn't matter what type of yarn you use. I used the yarn that matches my project right here, but if you want to decrease or increase the size, then you could do so with the hook size and the type of yarn that you use. If you um, want a smaller one, use a smaller, lighter yarn. And, you know, obviously the opposite would be true. Use a bulky yarn for a larger one. So, um, I hope you enjoy. If you have any questions, be sure to write them in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And many thanks to Nikki and Stitches who provided the instructions for this tutorial. Have fun! I often tell new pattern readers to highlight the different steps within one row to make it easier to read and memorize. However, notice how Nikki has already done this for us by ending each step with a period. Perfect! It's ready for us to get right to work. So before we attack this pattern, let's understand the construction of this flower. We're going to start by creating a ring that we're going to crochet a bunch of stuff into. Then what we'll do is we'll build a base of a bunch of chain stitches. They'll be like loops. And then the next row after we build a base will be the fill in row. And that's when it begins to look like a flower. After we do a fill-in row, it goes back to the base, and we'll be building some more chains. And then the following row after that, we'll fill in those guys so that our flower gets fuller and fuller and fuller and fuller. So, yeah, start at the beginning with the ring, and then we'll do a base row, and then a fill-in row. And these two will repeat with, you know, different sizes as we go. So now that you understand what's happening on the basic construction, let's get started. All right, looking at our instructions, it tells us to chain five, slip stitch in the first chain to make a ring. So that's what we're doing is making a ring. So make a slip knot any old way because all slip knots seem to turn out well. Okay. We're chaining five, one, two, three, four, and five, and then we're doing a slip stitch in that first chain, which is right there. And of course, a slip stitch involves no yarn overs. And there is our ring. I had to get a sticky because that's the way I keep track of my rounds. All right, so let's look at round one. What are we supposed to be doing here? We chain one. And you know, notice that we chain one on every single one of these rows, so that's good to know. We chain one, then we single crochet and chain three five times in the ring. And then we join with a slip stitch 
to the first chain made at the start of this round. Guess what? That's the same on every single one of these rows. We join with a slip stitch, join with a slip stitch, join with a slip stitch over and over again. So the only thing that differs on each of these rows is actually these patterns that we repeat around the round. All right, so we're going to chain one. We're going to single crochet chain three five times in the ring. Let's do it. All right, go ahead and tighten everything up and make sure you know the difference between what your tail is and your working yarn, of course, because I have made the mistake of using my tail instead. Now, I don't want to sew this in later, so I'm just going to crochet over it by holding the tail against the back of the ring. Okay, can you see what I'm doing? Alright, so our instructions said to chain one, boom, and to single crochet, chain three, five times in the ring. So a single crochet, yarn over, pull through, and chain three. One, two, and three. And then we repeat, holding that working, I mean the uh, tail against the ring. Single crochet. One, two, and three. Okay, we've done two single crochet. Insert in the middle, yarn over, pull up, complete that single crochet, and one, two, three. We've completed three single crochets. This one would be our fourth. One, two, three. And then this one is our fifth. Let's see, one, two, three. Yeah, this is the fifth single crochet. One, two, three. So what do we have? We have one, two, three, four petals. And when we close this by joining with that slip stitch, we'll have five petals. So where do we join? All right, this is that first single crochet. Can you see its legs wrapping around the, the ring right there? And a single crochet always wears its hat to the right, so that's extending that direction. So this is that chain that we did right here. Whoops. It's always tricky at the beginning. So sometimes you have to kind of pull things around to arrange them like you want it. And slip stitch, yarn over and pull it through that tight thing and through there. Okay, pull your working yarn to snug it all up. Do you have five petals? I believe we do. One, two, three, four, five. And that completes round one. So what I'm going to do now is cut off my tail. I crochet all around it so it's snugly placed in there and I get it out of our way. So for round two, we are, well let's, let's review this. Always, I told you, you create a base, which is what we just did with these chains, and now we fill it in to get our petal look. So what does round two look like? We're going to chain one, we're going to single crochet, five double crochet, and single crochet in each of those chain three spaces around. And we're going to repeat that in every one of those little base petals we set up. And of course, join with a slip stitch to the first chain made at the start of this round. Okie dokie. So as with every row, we begin with a chain one and start this pattern. Single crochet, five doubles, and a single. So we begin every round with that chain one. And then we begin the pattern, which is the single crochet in that first loop, followed by five double crochet. So that's one. Two. Three. Four. Five. And then we end it with another single crochet. So see how we've got our first petal built upon this base. So you do another single crochet in the beginning of the next loop. And five doubles. One. We get some more yarn. Two. Three. 
four, five, and then look how it seems as though I have filled it up and there's no room for the single crochet. Well, you can just slide it across like a shower curtain. Just push it across and stick your single, whoops, I missed. Stick your single right beside it. And there is petal number two. And you repeat that in each subsequent base. Okay, do that much and I'll meet you back when we go, when we return to the end, to the beginning. Okay, I made it back around to the starting point, and so we have to do the slip stitch, and there's always the question, where is that? So locate that first single crochet, which happens to be right there. Do you see the legs coming down? And a single crochet has a crooked hat leaning to the right, so the slip stitch, I mean, um, the chain we have to join is right there. Do you see I'm pinching it? Okay, so I'm going to slide into here. No, I'm not. I'm going to shove it into there because it's kind of hard. And slip stitch. Okay, so I've joined it. I have four wonderful little petals. Now, it's important to note right here, you don't have to get it exactly in that particular stitch. We're building layers upon layers upon layers, and they're all going to be folded in like this and looking so pretty. And where exactly that stitch is placed is really not going to make that much of a difference, so don't fret. We've actually completed our first row of petals, which consisted of a base and a fill-in. And now the next row we're about to work on will be another base for the next row. Now this is going to sound tricky, but when I show it to you, it won't be tricky at all. Alright, chain one as usual. Working behind the petals made in round two, we're going to single crochet in the chain three space of round one, and then chain five. That's the pattern that we're going to be doing, and the tricky part is this, working behind the petals. Okay, with every row, we chain one, right, to start us off. Now, if you're familiar with a front post double crochet or a back post, you'll know what we're doing here. First of all, let's call these spokes our posts. This one right here looks a little funny. That's where we did all our joining, so it's a little bit more bulky than the others, but we're going to treat that clump as one post. Okay, so here's what we do, because we have to work from the back to do this single crochet. Normally, we would work from the top, right? Like right on top of here and off we go. But we're not doing that. So, what we have to do is take our hook and go in front of this yarn, because we don't want to create a yarn over. So, go in front of it. Working behind, we come from back to front through that hole, over the post I was just talking about, and through the hole, over here so that our post is behind. It's a back post, okay? Yarn over and pull through everything, both of those openings, and complete your single crochet on the back, like that. And then the instructions told us to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. All right, let's do that tricky part again. All right, clearly we just finished this one. See how it's coming from right there? So now we need to crochet around this post. From back here, in front of that one, into there. Now, do a regular single crochet. See, it's pulling from the back just like we wanted. And complete that single crochet. And then chain one, two, three, four and five. Let's do that tricky part again. Okay, here is where it's coming from, this post, so we have to go to this one. Go in that hole, out that hole, yarn over, pull through both, and complete the single crochet on the back. One, two, three, four, and five. Check to see. I just completed that one because that's where it's coming from turn. Got to do this one now. So it's in that hole, out that hole, yarn over, pull through both, 
and complete that single crochet on the back. One, two, three, four, and five. And then, this is the last one we have to do. That's that fuzz right there. Okay, in this hole, out that hole, yarn over, pull through both. And then finish your single crochet on the back. One, two, three, four, five. Now what's happening back here? We just created the base and we'll be filling in our petals on the next row. So what we have here is one, two, three, four loops and this creates our fifth. So let's find that chain to slip into. Okay, here was where we did that crazy single crochet. It's kind of long-legged right here. So just, I, this is what I do. I look like this and say, where's a good place for me to join this thing? Oh, I think I'll do it back here. And look, we have our completed first petal row. And back here we've got the base. All right, so let's see what to do next. Okay, we're moving right along, so now we're about to do the fill-in part on that base. Round four tells us to chain one, as usual, and then here is our pattern. It's a single crochet, nine doubles, and a single crochet in each of those chain five spaces. And then we join with a slip stitch. Now in this round, I think she made a little typo here by, she, she pasted join with a slip stitch twice. So just ignore that. You know how it is. We all make those little mistakes. No big deal. So here's our pattern. Single crochet, nine double crochets, and a single crochet. Let's do it. We begin every row with the chain one. Now pull up your loop you're going to be working on, which is this one. Single crochet, nine double crochet. Go right here. Oops. Now you know what? This is easy. Single crochet, nine doubles, and a single crochet, and then you repeat it in the next loop. Go ahead and do that part, and I'll meet you back here when I return to the beginning of the round. So single crochet, oh look at me, I'm messing up. Single crochet, nine doubles, and a single crochet in every loop. Okay, I'm doing nine. Scooting it over like a shower curtain to get that last single crochet there. Okay, and now we have to join with a slip stitch. Just kind of pull everything around. I think that looks like a good spot. And there you go. So what do you have at this point? You have two rows of five petal flowers. Okay, so we just filled in. So now we have to create a base row with round five. So what does that look like? Starts with the chain one as usual. Working behind the petals made in round four. Hmm, that sounds more familiar now. Single crochet in the next chain three space of round one and chain seven. All right, so we know this doesn't sound so scary because now we know it's merely a back post double crochet. So let's go ahead and start that row with a chain one and see what it looks like. So there we go with our chain one. Okie dokie, back post. Where are we going to start? Right under this chain, right there. So we go in this one and then we go into the next one. Yarn over, pull that yarn all the way through to the back and then complete your single crochet on the back of your work. And now chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so which one did we just complete? This one. See how our work is coming from this one right here? So we now need to go around this one. So that means going in here and out there. Right, yarn over, pull that yarn all the way through, working on the back, finish your single crochet. 
and chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, this is the one we finished because here is our work. So we now need to go to this one, All right? So we go in and out, yarn over, pull it all the way through to the back, and finish our single crochet and chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is a little bit tricky, but it's it's not too hard, right? All right, so here's where we finished. So we turn to this one, where we go in this one, out that one, yarn over, pull all the way through, finish your crochet on the back. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. All right, what do we have so far? One, two, three loops. Okay, so we figure out where we left off, which was right there, because that's where it's coming from. And we go in this one, out that one, yarn over, pull that yarn all the way through to the back where we finish our single crochet. Chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. All right, so now we have four loops. One, two, three, four, and when we join this one, we have our fifth. So now we decide where we need to join it. Okay, let's see, there's that single crochet. I think this is the slip stitch we want, I mean the, the chain we want to do our slip stitch in, complete the slip stitch. All right, so what do we have back here? Do we have our five? Yes, we do, see them? There's our five loops. So round six tells us, this will be a fill-in row for that uh, for those petals. We're gonna start with our chain one, and here's the pattern we repeat. A single crochet, 13 double crochet, and a single crochet in the chain seven space around. Join with that slip stitch in the end. Okay, so this is the easy part. I really don't think you need me on this. We start with that chain one, and then begin that pattern, which is single crochet, 13 double crochet, and a single crochet in each of these chain seven loops that we made. Now everybody has a different crochet style, the way they hold the yarn, and the way they hold the, the crochet hook as well. So when you get, I mean, this is kind of awkward what you're doing. So sometimes I hold mine like a sandwich like this and just work into this loop or sometimes I feel like when, I, when it starts getting really full that I just need to shove all these out of the way and then just work like this you know where you do your single crochet slide it over if you need to like the shower curtain we talked about double crochet I'm splitting my yarn Okay, and just my point of showing you this is that it doesn't really matter as long as you get the job done. There are no rules in crochet. So continue on with your 13 on this row flanked by their single crochet on either side. So go ahead and do that and I will meet you around when it's time to join. So I just finished that last single crochet. And now what you really need to do before you join is Find all your petals and put them in the right places because everything gets all wrinkly back there. So here's the next petal that I'm joining to. So in between there. So I'm going to put it all oh, about right there. There. All right, so where are we at the end of round six? We've created three layers of pretty pebbly flowers. Now quite frankly, this is a great flower. You could stop right here if you wanted to. 
um, fluff this up to cover that or put a button or something there. But I really like it exactly as she's written it. I want it to be so full. So I'm going to continue on with the last two rounds. So let's set up the base for the last row of petals. We're going to chain one working behind the petals made in round six. We're going to single crochet in the next chain space and chain nine around. Okay, so working in the back, we're going to single crochet and chain nine. So flatten everything out so we know where we're working. Begin every row with that chain one. And now working just as we did before. Okay, here's the first post. We go in this hole, out that hole, yarn over and pull the yarn through both to the back and complete our single crochet. And then it told us to chain nine for this base row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. All right, back to the trickier part here. Where is it coming from? It's coming from this post right here, see? So this is our post we need to go to. Go in this side, and out that side. Yarn over, pull the yarn through both to the back, and complete our single crochet. And chain nine. One, two, three, four, whoops, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Turn it back to the front. Where did I leave off? Right there. Okay, so I'm going to go around this one now. So we're in this hole, cross out of that hole. Yarn over, pull the yarn all the way through to the back, and complete our single crochet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Are you tired of me showing this step to you? I feel like it's the most confusing of all the steps. Where did we finish? Oh, we finished right here, right there. So we're coming to this one. In this side, out that side, yarn over, pull that yarn all the way through to the back. Chain, I mean, complete your single crochet and chain nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Back to the front. That's where we left off, was right there. See it? So we gotta wrap around this one. So we go in here, out there. Yarn over, pull through, and get out of the way. Complete the single crochet. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, where are we? I'm losing track. Look at that mess back there. Always helps to straighten everything out and count. See where you are. Oh, look, we've got four loops. One, two, three, four. And they're just as they're supposed to look once you straighten them all out. So now it's time to do the slip stitch to create that fifth loop. So give it a good look here. I believe, hey Harry, come in. I believe this is the chain right there that I want. And slip it through. And now let's see what we do for our final round. So let's fill in that base we just made by starting with chain one, single crochet, then 17 double crochet with a single crochet in each of those loops and join with a slip stitch. So what's the pattern repeat? Single crochet, 17 doubles, and a single crochet. We begin with chain one as usual find your first loop. I think this is the trickiest part. And this is the hardest row, I think, because you're dealing with all of this bulk. But just make sure each time that you've got the right loop as you travel around the flower. Single crochet, 17 doubles, and a single crochet in each loop. Meet you back at the beginning. Okay, so I've finished filling in that entire row. And boy, it's all squishy in there because 17 is a lot to fit on 
that loop. But that's what makes a full flower. So what I have to do now is join with a slip stitch somewhere. So I'll just stick it in right there because it seems like as good a place of any as any. And then I'm going to leave about a foot of yarn when I cut so that I can sew it on. Pull that through. Alright, so what does it look like? Straighten everything out flat and turn it over. And there it is! A pretty little flower. I just love it. It's my all-time favorite. Now, we can either leave it just like this because when you mount it, see, like, you can see through it right there, but when you put it, when you attach it to your project, it'll be dark and it, it'll just look like that, which is absolutely lovely just as it is, right? But we can actually change its little personality. For example, if we want to give it to our grandmothers, we might put something like that in it. It makes it a little bit more, um, I don't know, sophisticated the right word? Assuming you have a sophisticated grandmother. Or you could try something like that. Or maybe if it's not a frou-frou person, you want something a little bit more tailored or modern even. Or what if you got a goofy kid? That would be fun. Or a bee. I don't have a bee, but wouldn't a bee be great? A little mouse hiding in there. Or what about for Halloween? I got these at Michael's. They're supposed to be, you know, glued in place. So you'd have to just glue it like that. That would be funny. Or use like a button. I have this badge, I think they call them, on the other side of the pond. But that's cute too. I think a middle school girl would go crazy over that. But regardless, make it your own. Now use a tapestry needle to thread this long tail that you left on the tapestry needle and then sew it onto your project. And it may be that you would want to anchor the bottom layers so you could sew right smack through there if you wanted to. If not, just sew around the center right here. Again, there's no rules in crochet. As long as it comes out the way you want, you're good to go. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Thanks for watching.